Hey there, Tad Argy from Marketing for Hippies. Today's video is about the resistance around niching. I'm going to read out a message that I got from somebody. Uh, it's from a fellow named Ryan Burkholder. He said, I'm noticing a feeling regarding niching. I can recognize the advantage to niching and attaching yourself to a specific market, but I've always been resistant to this idea. I'm not sure if it's because I don't want to corner myself. I don't know what that one passion is for me, or I'm afraid of having to focus on a narrow field or a subject day in and day out. It feels like this resistance is holding me back and I can see how it has a negative impact on my marketing, which is a real weakness of mine. Some internal exploring to do here for sure, but I'm curious if this is something you come across often. It's all I come across. <laughs> uh, you know, the thing I give away the most content on for free is niching. And whenever people book one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'd say 95% of the time they're calling me with questions about the niche, trying to get that clear. So the resistance is normal. And so there's a few things to say here. One is if you go to marketingforhippies.com slash steps, go to step two, you'll see all my free content around niching. Number two is if you sign up to my starter kit on my website, marketingforhippies.com uh, slash starter dash kit, if you want the full info, one of the things that's included in that is a little uh, ebook that I wrote years ago called Niching Fears, and it goes over the 14 specific fears that I've heard the most often around niching and some of my thoughts on each, and so that may also help soothe it. But in a big picture, of course we're scared of niching. Of course we're scared because, but we're only scared of it abstractly, you know, we're only scared of niching in, in broad philosophical terms. People are scared of um, the process of niching, but they're never scared of their niche. That's something I noticed. The thought of niching, of course, sounds like you're losing out and you're, you're going to be just insanely focused and not able to talk about anything else, which isn't how it works in the real world anyways. But we get all these fears about it. And then when people land on their niche, when they land on a, a niche that feels really right for them, those fears all go away. The resistance tends to go away. But then the other thing is, um, the resistance itself is something to pay attention to. There's probably information in the resistance to the niching that may actually inform the niche itself. So if you've been thinking about, oh, is this the niche for me? Is this the, the one to focus on? And you notice uh, it doesn't feel right. There's a reason it doesn't feel right. And it is worth sitting with that to see what that might have to tell you about who you want to work with. Um, but yeah, it's a very normal thing, Ryan. This, this uh, resistance to niching is genuinely most of what I deal with. And again, I think the reason it's resistance is people are resisting the idea of niching because they haven't actually found their niche yet. Once people find their niche, I've heard the same thing with life purpose coaches. People get so resistant to this idea of finding their life purpose. So what if their life purpose is to vacuum hallways in a corporate office tower for the rest of their life? Yeah, but uh, it never really seems to be that that's the purpose. It doesn't mean that's not what they'll do for work, that maybe their purpose is to spread love and to spread joy. And once they realize that, they say, oh, I can actually keep that job because it's a nice steady gig and spread love while I'm doing it. You understand how it goes. So yes, totally normal. If any of you out there are feeling just so caught up on, on your niche, you could feel free to book a puttering session that they sell out quick, marketingforhippies.com slash puttering. But first of all, just check out all the free stuff that there is. I've got a few ebooks on niching as well. It may help. And of course, you know, it goes without saying, our deepest wounds are often a doorway to our truest niche, the places that we have struggled the most and then overcome. This is um, often a doorway to a niche that can be really fulfilling, especially if you're in the healing arts. So I'll leave that there. Ryan, thank you so much for your question. And uh, of course, for all of you, if you ever have any questions you can't find an answer in a video, uh, drop me a line or post something in a comment below, and it may just turn into the next video I do. Thank you everyone who subscribes. If you haven't subscribed, hit the red button and the bell icon. If you give it a like on this video, it really does help uh, more people see these videos. I think that's it. Thanks, everybody.